Coming up, I'm going to tell you who's really losing in this topsy-turvy job market. And then a company CEO stares down Ian the Hurricane. We'll break that down. And I coach you up. Let's go. Coaching you up so that you can make more money and experience more meaning in your work. So I'm the income and impact guy on your behalf. Welcome. Let's go. So this job market, very interesting. Still very low unemployment, yet we're seeing more and more news come out each and every day of more layoffs and things of that nature. And then the Fed continues to raise interest rates. And so you've got a lot of companies that are kind of slowing down on hiring uh, you see different types of news every day to where you think, well, it's it's not a great, great time. Well, this is simply not true. We still sit here today with more jobs available by the millions. So let's say over 11 million jobs available, um, 8 million people. We're just round numbers here, unemployed. So still a job seekers market. And we're going to cover that in great detail. Next year's going to be a good year for raises. More on that coming up. But the fact of the matter is, is in this great resignation season that continues to happen, 4 million plus people leaving, millions and millions and millions, it's over 60 million people have changed jobs over the last, you know, call it 14, 16 months. What it has done is it has driven up wages and salaries. A good thing for the individual, but frankly drives inflation. It just does. So all that said, uh, there are winners and losers. And so I want to talk about the losers because some of you may be in that category and I want to help you win. So if you're losing, how can we win in this environment? So let's break it down. I think there's three types of people. Um, well, I'm sorry. There's three groups that are losing. One is, the first one is uh, companies. Companies that are not able to retain people. They're losing people in droves. Or they have recently been hard hit by an exodus. A steady exodus. This is the number one category of people who are of losers in this job economy. And that, by the way, is what's driving some of the insane hiring offers. I mean, crazy bonuses for just signing. Uh, overloaded benefits that didn't exist prior. Obviously, wages up. So, this has created a super competitive market for talent. And, and, and as a result, a lot of companies are losing because they're not competing well enough. And so they're they're the big losers. They're sitting there going, we lost our best talent, and now we're forced to overpay in some cases in, uh, bad employees. And it's created a lot of leverage for people who are the quiet quitters. They're kind of like, I'm not going to go above and beyond. I'm only going to do the bare minimum. Why? You can't afford to fire me. This is a real dynamic in the workforce right now. So the first group is companies that are not valuing their employees. And I want to break that down. If you aren't valuing people, you are going to leave yourself exposed much more than necessary. Now, people come and people go. In a normal environment, I, I want to acknowledge that. You're not going to keep everybody forever. Okay. But it is also uh, a false notion that you can't keep people for a long time. You can, but you have to be extremely intentional, right? You got to make sure that they're on the right seat of the bus where they're, as I call it, in their sweet spot, where they use what they do best to do work they love to produce results that they care about. That's the meaning and purpose piece. The second piece is you have to consistently recognize your team. A company has to be radical in recognition. Radical recognition. Privately. Publicly. Acknowledge your people. Recognize it for their unique contribution. Think of it as a parent. You got to constantly let your kids know, I'm proud of you. Here's what you're doing great. Keep it up. That's the second factor. The third factor in valuing people is as leaders, you must have a relationship with them beyond the authority position. Positional leadership is not relational leadership. Oh, that's good. Alex, would you write that down? I want to come back to that. Positional leadership is not relational leadership. What I mean by that is 
if the only relationship context that you have with your team is that you're the boss and you are the power broker, that's not a relationship. It's just not. Meaning they respect you out of your authority only. They obey you. They don't follow you. Oh, write that down too. Uh, I'm dead serious. They obey you. They don't follow you. Uh, th this is the core of most leadership problems. This is how leaders lead. They lead from position and people follow them only because they have to. And the moment they realize, watch, that they can go somewhere else and get a better paycheck for the same kind of crap, same kind of environment, but they get a better paycheck. Or they could go somewhere and get a better paycheck and be valued and have a relationship with their leader where the leader sees them and cares about them and develops them. Well, they're gone. So that's what I mean by the big losers in this great resignation and this continued uh, lopsided job market are companies that are losing talent. The second group that are losing employees who chase the paycheck. People who chase the paycheck only. Now, listen, I, I, I say it every day. I want you to make more income, and I want you to make more impact. But this idea that you can only work for income, and that's all there's ever going to be, is false. It's short-sighted. It's untrue. You can do what you love and be loved and love what you make. Lots of love in that sentence. It's possible. Now, People who chase the paycheck right now, there's a lot of them. They're calling them. There's two types in this. I chased the paycheck, and it wasn't on purpose. And so now they're, they're calling it two things. You've got the boomerang people who are wanting to go back and actively trying to go back to the place they left because they realize it was not better. The grass was not greener. And then, the, and then the other group is, well, they left. It was a crappy place. They went to another place, and now they're looking for something else. So they're calling this the great regret. The third group are the people that were left behind. They're the, they're the This is the third group of, of losers, uh, and I'm not calling them losers. I'm saying they're losing right now, is that they didn't leave. They got left behind, and when they got left behind, they're getting piled on. They're having to pick up more work, more duties. They're not getting paid anymore for it. And they're left, if you will, to, to catch the plates as they fall from the cupboard. And, and, and so th these are the three groups. Companies who are, who are who got left, there was an exodus, and they're struggling with talent. People who left for the wrong reasons, and now they're like, oh, I want to either go back or I'm going to have to keep moving. I'm wandering to find something better, unstable, unsure. And then the third group, the people that were left behind, and they have um, been just buried with extra duties and not extra pay. Even with the extra pay, they're buried. You can't solve for physical, emotional, and mental health issues due to overwork by giving someone a bigger paycheck. You do realize that, right? A bigger paycheck is not even a Band-Aid. So those are the folks that are losing in this job economy. And here's the deal. Great leadership can fix it all. We're here to help on that. Coming up, speaking of leadership... Do we have a situation of bad bossery or someone telling the truth? Job offer attracts over 250 applicants. If you've made it to the interview, you've already made a great impression. So now is the time to showcase how you are the best choice for the role. That's why we created How to Win the Interview. This free guide will walk you through the five strategies to help you stand out amongst the competition. With just some intentionality, you can prepare yourself to win the interview. Go to KenColeman.com slash interview. Oh, hi. How you doing? I'm Ken. I was just over here jumping on the YouTube channel. How's everybody doing out in YouTube land? Oh boy, I forgot to turn my speaker off. There it is. I'm telling you, I'm such a dad sometimes. It's so pathetic. I mean, I never thought I'd be that guy, but I do it all the time. But anyway, I wanted to get up there on the YouTube channel. Hey, to our YouTube crazies that are watching. 
Uh, real quick announcement, very excited about this. It's a little bit of a bulletin board item. If you are in sales or would like to go into sales, in other words, you want to win in sales, Ramsey Career Academy, it's a new venture uh, with me and our Ramsey Education Department and executives and rock stars here in the building that are our experts in certain courses, uh, have launched a new course. It's called Sales 101. Chris Campbell, our Ramsey Solutions, uh, or a Ramsey Solutions Senior Vice President and world-class salesperson and now leader in sales, he and I team up to teach you how to maximize your service as a salesperson and thus increase your success as a salesperson. Very, very affordable course, very effective course. RamseySolutions.com slash sales course. RamseySolutions.com slash sales course. Go check it out. Talk to the team. Kick the tires and apply. And we'd love to see you over there. Uh, okay. So um, big story of this week is Hurricane Ian. Uh, can we put that up behind me on the screen? I'm so excited about this. This is almost a dream come true for me. The only thing that's not happening right now is we aren't moving into a green screen where I would stand up and, and I would move my hands and say, well, we have some southeasterly winds coming in here at about X amount. Yeah, I love the weather green screen idea, but there it is. This is a dream come true, guys. Uh, so story of the week, obviously very destructive. Hurricane Ian made landfall yesterday. Correct me when I start to say something wrong. Devastated the Fort Myers area. I was watching some coverage last night. Uh, tremendous flooding. Uh, I don't have the latest and greatest this morning of all the details, but that's not why you're here. But look at that image. I mean, that's terrifying. Uh, category four or five. Do we know if it ever reached five for landfall? This is a four, which is still serious business. Okay, so here's the point. Look at that storm. It's no joke. Okay. Um, but we've got a uh, leader who stepped in it. Uh, did they step in it correctly? Did they step in it incorrectly? Uh, for those of you in the chat room, I really want you all to weigh in. If you want to get your name mentioned, you better have a sassy comment for or against this leader. All right, let's do that. And I'm going to give you, as I am a man of the people, I'm going to give you perspective from all fronts. Okay, so here we go. The um, company is uh, in based in Clearwater, Florida, which Clearwater is uh, right there in the Tampa Bay area. So you got Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg, Clearwater clustered in that area on the uh, west coast of Florida uh, there in the bay, right? And so the hurricane, as it was barreling down on Florida, most thought, or it was being reported for a, uh, for a period that it was going to make a direct hit on Tampa, and Tampa hadn't gotten a major hit in over 100 years. I think it was something like that. So, so everybody is obviously, you know, uh, uh, very serious about this. Uh, whether people are warning, government and state officials are warning, and, and and evacuations were happening, as is normal when this kind of storm comes around. Well, Postcard Mania is a postcard marketing company. Is that where they just send a bunch of like marketing postcards to my house? Is that what that means? Basically, okay, yeah, yeah. So they have a 69,000 uh, plus square foot campus in Clearwater, and Clearwater had declared a state of emergency on Tuesday, and Pinellas County began issuing evacuation orders on Monday. Okay, well, so the CEO, uh, in various communications and the company leadership, multiple times to employees on Monday, just this last Monday. Uh, insisted that the media was overhyping Hurricane Ian. Um, it left the entire nation of Cuba without power. It had 155 mile an hour winds at that point. So this is a direct quote from CEO Joy Gendusa. All right, this is what I want you all to comment on. Okay. If you want to leave your home and you're being told to leave your home, and they were, and you feel like you should and you have no place to go, Postcard Mania is probably the safest place in Florida. All right, let's go on alert. We could have some exaggeration going on here. I don't know if she's right or if she's wrong. Um, <laughs> anyway, bring your pets. Bring your kids. Bring everybody to Postcard Mania. See, this is where I start to get really nervous about the leadership decision-making here. This is going to be Noah's Ark. People just coming in by twos. Hey, the Jones family's here. Got the wife and the four kids and the three cats, the gerbils, and don't forget 
Sammy the Salamander. I mean, is that really what they wanted to happen? I don't think so. And so I think that this is irresponsible to say something like this. Is it the safest place? I don't know. I have a hard time believing that. The statement goes on. Obviously, you feeling safe and comfortable is of the utmost importance. Really? But, and this is where bad things happen for leaders, when we just put that but right in there. Leave well enough alone sometimes, leaders. Well, she goes on to say, but I honestly want to continue to deliver and I want to have a good end of quarter. And when the hurricane turns into nothing, I don't want it to be like, great, we all stop producing because of the media and maybe um, that it was going to be terrible. Uh, goes on to say, as most of you know, Postcard Mini was built to withstand a Category 5 hurricane. Okay, so there we go. Well, at least they're providing some information. And since we are a national company and we'd like to continue servicing our clients, if we can, you will be allowed to bring your children to work those two days. <laughs> really? Who wants to do that? Nobody. Um, we will have movies and other fun stuff in the common area to keep them entertained. No, this is Noah's Ark. It would be freaking Pam Demonium. And then you question, how effective are we going to be? And I understand the leader going, look, it, there's not a hurricane anywhere else. I get that. And I get that she wants to have a good quarter. All honorable goals. But the fact of the matter is, you got to take care of your people. you got to know what the tone of the people are. And if you're going to cast a different vision, don't be glib about it and throw stuff out that you haven't given one half of a second of a thought for. Do they really want all those freaking kids there? They're disgusting. Yeah, I don't know. Well, anyway, the tweet and all the emails and stuff got put out there, and so a lot of negative uh, reaction. And so uh, then came an email. We wanted to make sure you know that postcard many offices will be closed Wednesday and Thursday this week. Hope to re reopen our offices on Friday. So basically they got hammered uh, and, and, and maybe, maybe, you know, maybe some of the spouses or other leaders at Postcard Mania had enough um, spine to go talk to Joy and go, Joy, look, maybe this is a little tone deaf. Maybe this was a little too John Wayne. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so there you go. I mean, it, now, 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 let me give the other side of the story. It did not hit Tampa Clearwater directly. And from what I saw last night, please correct me if I'm wrong. It went into Fort Myers and it was, and I was watching, you know, hey, CNN's never wrong. And I was watching last night. It was going to go across the state on a path through Orlando to Daytona. So all I'm saying is uh, I don't know what the damage was, but she's not a weather person either. So while she may ended up being right with the thing, was it overhyped? I don't think so. Alex, I'm looking at the, vi the video of what happened in Fort Myers, and I don't think that's overhyped. I just don't. And, and so you're not a weather person as a leader. You got to understand, no one can predict where the storm is. Uh, I think they did the right thing by actually going, okay, we're actually going to shut down the office and allow you to hunker down and not feel like you got to bring the whole freaking house to our headquarters, which would have been an unmitigated disaster, I promise. So there you go. Some bad bossery that was at least recovered. If the thought of attending a networking event makes you break out in hives, you're not alone. And I'll let you in on a secret. Networking in the traditional sense doesn't work, but genuine connection is all about relationships. That's why we created networking the right way. This free guide is the low pressure, high impact way to overcome the awkwardness, build real relationships, and turn your connections into opportunities. To get the guide, go to kencoleman.com slash network.
All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Colbert Show, where we help you make more income and more impact in your work. The days of, oh, I'm just trying to make it to Friday. Happy hour, where I can drink my face off. You know, we don't want any more droopy dogs, right? We need to get that image of Droopy Dog and his voice. Is that copyrighted as well? Love Droopy Dog. You remember him? Uh, fantastic. And that's what a lot of you are, are experiencing in your work life. And I'm just telling you, that's not okay. And we want to help you get out of that. Uh, okay. As a man of the people, I am here to prepare you, as I do every day, with sterling performance, I might add. Um, good news Good news, uh, according to the experts and the predictions here, Fortune Magazine put out an article, say goodbye to the standard 3% raise. One quarter of employers plan to give increases of 5 to 7% next year. Wow. Uh, okay, let's look at the data. Uh, this is coming from David Turetsky. That's an unfortunate name. I'm sure he got picked on a lot with that in high school. Uh, he is a VP of consulting at salary.com. He said the increases have gone up from what had been 3% for many years. Uh, it's now budgeted for 4% and potentially higher for next year. New data released by salary.com, a software company that provides compensation data and analytics found that the median pay increase of 4% is continuing an upward trend that began in 2022. That's absolutely correct. We've begun to see much higher but what we're talking about here uh, is the standard, which has been at really hovering at 3% for many, many years. We saw pay increases much higher, 15%, 20%, and that's still happening. But what we're talking about is what the companies are going, okay, as a company, our policy is if you're doing a good job and you have your annual blah, 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 this is what we're looking at. We've been given 3% bumps, and we're going to raise that, okay? So that is, that, is, that is a new rule in the world of work. I absolutely agree with this data. He continued on to say, we usually see job switchers get large pay increases when they go to other places. That's exactly what I was just saying. Now we're seeing people who are what we call stayers, people who stay in roles, or are saying, well, what about me? And that's reasonable, right? I stayed. You piled it on me, man. Show me some love. It's natural. And so the 4% increases are an attempt to placate or pacify. And it's it, and I mean that. I use that word, those two words very, very intentionally. The, the, the temptation leaders is to look at the external situation and what's going on out there and go, oh gosh, you know, I don't want to lose our team. No, so I'm gonna I'm gonna raise them. I'm gonna raise them. Give them a raise. Well, if you're not helping them experience purpose and meaning in their work by getting them on the right seat of the bus, if you're not uniquely, or excuse me, if you're not intentionally praising and recognizing their unique contribution, if you are not developing a coach or mentor relationship with them, they have no reason to stay. And the paycheck bump is just a Band-Aid at best. But I'm still happy for it. Still happy. But it's not enough. Um, now, what about executives? A lot of class warfare out there you see in the media and stuff like this. So do these increases uh, include executives? Uh, the survey found that the median 4% increase planned for 2023 by about 25% of companies is across all categories, executives, managers, and exempt and non-exempt employees. However, the data showed that the actual median increase in 2022 for executives was 3.5% compared to 4% for all other categories. Why is that true? Well, you got a lot of leaders going, hey, I'm paid well. I want to take less and let's see if we can spread the surplus around. Um, or not surplus, but 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 spread what what would be my equivalent of the four percent and spread it around. And then when you look at executive salaries, it is important to note that that we're talking the larger the company and certainly in publicly held companies, most of executives' compensation comes from stock anyway. So you might say, well, they made twenty million last year. Well, that's not in base salary. That would be stocks, uh, options. 
uh, and 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 things of that nature because they can do that. Companies have that option to do that. It's found money, if you will. Uh, the for an example, the median pay packet for leaders of S and P 500 companies rose roughly 12 percent to 14.7 million that year. But again, most of that is stock. Okay, I know that doesn't make some of you who can't stand when when executives get paid a lot of money feel better, but it is important to at least know uh, what's going on there. Okay, so there you go. So why do I share that with you? Maybe staying is the best option. And I think that it's hard for a lot of people to think, well, I've seen a lot of my friends and coworkers go get huge bumps. And they're tempted to go for the bigger paycheck when if the if this if, if all of the people leaving and all the bumps weren't a part of the just the the current climate they wouldn't be thinking about leaving because they're on the right ladder, on the right rung, and there is great opportunity for them there. But can I, I just want to let everybody off the hook. If you've been distracted by, man, I could go over here and make more money. Listen, that's the natural human reaction. But I will tell you that if you're not careful, you let that tempt you or you let that gnaw at you. If you let that tempt you, You'll make a move that is really good in the short term. In other words, more money in my bank account and more status because I got a better title. But that wears off. So it's only good in the short term because it actually takes you off the path or off the ladder that you're supposed to be on. Okay? Now, that's the distract you or tempt you. The gnaw at you is the idea that you sit where you are and you just look at everybody else. You go, they're making more money and they're making more money. We start playing that comparison game. And now that becomes something that builds into deep resentment and you become toxic pretty quickly and you don't want that. Okay. So if you are where you are, I still think you can win financially and get good bumps. But you must have your eye on the prize, the long term. All right. Now, for those of you who want to ask for a raise, you know, can I? How do I do it? Well, I wrote a detailed article on this. It's a two to three minute read. It's called How to Ask for a Raise. You can go get it at the Mothership website, RamseySolutions.com. How to Ask for a Raise. That's all you got to search. How to Ask for a Raise. Ken Coleman will get you there as well. Um, and, and so I just want to briefly walk through the, the article. It's a short read, much more detailed, but I want to hit a couple of things in the article. First, before we ever ask for a raise, I want you to do a thorough, and I mean thorough, assessment of yourself. And that means you're going to have to get some feedback from people. Meaning, before I ever go into a conversation with my leader about a raise, I want to be self-aware. I need to be uh, very aware of my brand, how I'm viewed, how my work is viewed, what the true value proposition is for what I've done. Because this is not an old school, you know, backroom negotiation. It's not that. But it is a discussion about value exchange, Right. Here's the value I think I bring, and as a result, I'd like to be compensated for that value. It's a value exchange. So it does take on that feel of a negotiation because of that. Okay. Secondly, um, uh, so, so, so the first two things is, 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 is thorough self-assessment and ask your peers for feedback. And then what you want to do is sit down with your leader and you want to have a conversation around a growth plan. You don't go in and say, hey, based on this, this, and this, I think I deserve a raise. I'd like to talk about, I'd like to see a number. That puts the, the, the leader on the defensive as opposed to sitting down and going, hey, here's where I think I stand, um, but I want to have an ongoing conversation. So, so when I even present this, I'm not asking for the details and conclusion now. I'm saying, would you be willing to meet with me soon about a growth plan? I want to grow in my responsibilities and thus my influence. And if I do that well, I want it to be measured in a way that I can get growth in my compensation, a growth plan. Would you help me architect it? You're giving them buy-in and allowing them to be a part of the conversation. Go get the article at RamseySolutions.com. Do you know what you were born to do? 
In order to get hired at a job you love, you need to get clear on your talent, passion, and mission. That's why our team created the Career Clarity Guide. In just a few minutes, this free tool will walk you through a process to discover what you do best, that's your talent, the work you love to do, that's your passion, and the results that matter to you, your mission. Then you'll feel more confident throughout the job search process. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash clarity. Welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show, where we help you make more money and experience more meaning. Uh, you're in a competition, whether you know it or not, and uh, I want to help you win. Part coach, part counselor, part cheerleader, man of the people. That's the easiest way to say it. Uh, for the people, of the people, by the people, for the people. Boy, you know, that doesn't mean I'm an injury lawyer, by the way. Some of these guys are trying to borrow that, that stuff. Come on, man. Come on. Uh, let's go to Binghamton, New York. Isaac is there. Isaac's time to get coached up. What's going on? Uh, hi, Ken. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. Um, uh, really just looking for uh, some guidance on when it's time to leave a company. I've uh, been with my current company since 2009, so about 13 years. And it was kind of a startup. The company started around 2007. Um, so I've been there a long time, a lot of hours, a lot of growth within the company, a lot of knowledge. Um, really just started as entry level, uh, worked up to a lead role, and then a production supervisor, and now currently a, a training manager for the last four and a half years. And uh, I'm just struggling. I've, I've had a lot of failure in this current role. And What has uh, been the cause of that failure? Uh, I, I feel like a lot of it's just, uh, leadership buy-in. Like, I think they would all agree that, Hey, training is important. Um, but we don't want to de dedicate the time to do it. And so I can spend a lot of time creating content. Uh, but ultimately I can't, I don't feel like I need to keep selling training. I'm, I'm not a salesman, so to speak. Um, and so, the leadership so you say your they, failure means that you believe that the company needs to be doing a lot more training and you're in some way responsible for that, but they're not buying it. So you're just failing to influence them to do what you believe it needs to be done. Uh, yes, I think that's fair. And ultimately it makes me think that, well, maybe I can't do this and it makes me want to almost go back to more of an operations role, production supervisor, manager, something like that. Let me ask you this though. Um, if they had an about face and came to you today and said, Hey, Isaac, we've been all wrong. We should have listened to you. We want to do it. Go for it. How would that change your impression of yourself? Uh, for me, it would be fine, but I'm uh, I'm afraid it would just be empty promises because I've been I promised know. a lot of support. I know, and... but you understand what I was doing with that rhetorical question. I mean, that was that was completely like I, I don't want you to get down on this because I think it's what you want to do, but you just can't do it where you are. Yeah, yeah and I think that's the concern, and so it, it kind of makes me think: Do I need to do? something else or do I need to look for a training role? I think you need else? to look for a training role somewhere else. Okay. Because the point is, is that if, if you were allowed to do it, you you're just discouraged right now and discouragement turns into confusion, doesn't it? Yes. I spent a lot of time arguing with myself. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's why I was trying to remove the barriers that you're facing right now that are coming from discouragement. I mean, you keep, you keep, you know, getting told no and rejected and, and all this kind of stuff. And you go, this needs to be done. This should be done, could be done, must be done, should be done, could be done, must be done, should be done, could be done, must be done. Right. And, and, and you got that. And then they keep going, no, 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 no. And you start to go, is it me? And then deep down in your heart, you know, it's not you, it's them. But that's the confusing message. Yeah, I guess it's hard to it's hard to have ownership of something that you're really dependent on a lot of other people to play their part in, and if they're not, playing you can't their have ownership. Part, can't have ownership if they won't let you do it. Yeah, that's fair. But Isaac, you love training people, and you can train people, and you're qualified to train people, and you want to train people. Are all those phrases I just uttered true or false? They're true. So we need to be looking for roles where you can actually take your skill set and your experience and your passion and go do it, my man. 
And now you know what the environment needs to be for you to succeed. You know the questions to ask in the interview. You know what to look for. You've, you, you've seen it, tasted it, and smelled it, what it's not. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you learn from your failures, certainly. I, yeah. Isaac, I got some great, gr- I got a great theme for you. Are you ready to receive it? Sure. Here it is, my friend. Take this job and shove it. There you go. Johnny Paycheck song. That's your theme. Download it on uh, uh, whatever, whatever music app you want. We'll give him the royalties. <laughs> okay. How's that uh, feel? Can I ask it? I mean, I, I think it's what I needed to hear. It's absolutely what you needed to hear, and I got to go pay some bills, but I've already told you what you needed to know. Go look for it, and when you find it, go for it with everything you got. You were created to fill a unique role through your work, but it can feel overwhelming to figure out what that is. That's why I created the Get Clear Career Assessment. In just 15 minutes, you'll get customized results that clarify what you do best, the work you love to do, and the results that motivate you. All this helps you discover what you were born to do. And you'll get a list of professional possibilities to help you in your job search. To get started, go to kencoleman.com slash assessment. Rocking some new rules in this crazy world of work. This is the Ken Coleman Show. One of my partners is ZipRecruiter. Uh, I, I know that the job search can just be brutally yucky. You know, you, you fill out a bunch of resumes, you send them, you get nothing but crickets back. Uh, you feel like I got to put all this time into it. I got to live my life. And that's why I endorse uh, services like ZipRecruiter. They are your recruiter. Just takes minutes to fill out a profile at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Upload your resume and they begin to work on your behalf. It is free to you because companies pay them for access to talent. So go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. All right, to Phoenix, Arizona, where Tracy sits on the line. Tracy, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Good morning. How are you? I am living the dream. What are you doing? Uh, sneaking away from work for a moment. No, oh, I will approve that. If you'd like me to write a note for you, let me know. <laughs> What's your question? So, uh, just some backstory. My husband is a part of a family company that involves five LLCs. He has been with the company for 20 years. Um, he has helped grow the company and also invested a lot of our personal money into the company. His father oversees everything still, and um, my husband is the only one who has stayed within the company. The other three siblings were bought out and moved. Oh, boy. And um, as of lately, my husband has semi-known all along, but the financials have come through to show that his capital within the company has been being shifted throughout the other companies. Um, to where it is not necessarily traceable. Um, it's all legal. He's been in discussions with both um, our banker and our accountant, and they said things look good, but he himself knows that they are not because he has no abilities to control financial because his dad is in control and has no... Okay, Tracy, I'm... Tracy, I'm, Tracy, I got to interrupt you because your phone just started skipping really, really bad, and I don't know what changed. Oh, no. Yeah, let's. Okay, let me know if that is that better. No. Okay, let's do this. Uh-oh. Um, let's hold on. I'm going to put you on hold, and Amanda, let's see if we can get her right back on. I'm going to uh, set this up for the rest of our audience before I give her the advice, because there's a lot of you that are listening right now where this might be very relevant in that you are in or you have a spouse and a family business and things aren't hunky freaking dory. And boy, oh boy, you want to talk about toxicity and crazy tension. Take a family business that is dysfunctional. Dysfunctional in the actual operations of the company, 
which is what we sounds like we have here, and the dysfunctional in the relationship capacity. Oh, boy, that's awful, right? When the company's dysfunctional professionally and then the relationships of all the family members are dysfunctional, I'm going to tell you what that is. That is what we call a dumpster fire. Out of control. And relationships can get burned really, really fast. And it feels like Tracy's husband is on the edge of that. And, and now you've got money involved where he's invested his money. Dad is still in control, uh, making all the decisions. So he's essentially handcuffed. And then he's the only sibling left in the family business. And I'll guarantee you there's all kinds of expectations and things like that going on. And the other siblings are always are already like this, you know, like Pontius Pilate. I'm washing my hands of this situation. I'm out. So that makes us even more complex. And so in this situation, and we're trying to get Tracy back on the line, talk to me. Are we are we going to get her? Um, in, this, in this situation, we start with, okay, long-term thinking for Tracy's husband. We start there. Not what his dad wants. Not what his dad expects. We're not thinking about the money that he's invested. He has to go immediately. And Tracy and her husband, they've got to sit down and go, what do we want for our life? What does our future look like down the road? We start there. And by the way, this is true of any of you who feel like I'm in a company that maybe it's not a family business, but I, I feel like, oh, I've been locked in here and I don't know and I'm feeling pressure to stay, whatever. You have to pull yourself out of your environment and you have to say, wait a second. What do I want my long-term future to look like? In other words, what is your mountaintop, professionally and personally? And Tracy and her husband have to say that. Where do we want to be in 15, 20, 30 years? Okay? And once we get to that conclusion, all right, that's step one. All right, this is where we want to be. Then you have to ask the all-important question. What would have to be true in this current family business or this current environment what would have to be true? Or in other words, what would have to become true because it's not there now for us to be able to say we stay here as a part of the path to get where we want to be long term. Okay. So that's the second step. Now, once we determine and we this needs to be detailed. Okay. Because it's sticky. We're talking about a founder is his father. And so once we know, okay, if it's so let's assume that they determine there could be some things that if we changed cuz so you might go through that second step that I just gave you and you might go there's no way to fix this so now that becomes easy for us to walk away but if we say all right it is possible okay so we're not able to get her so uh, could you please tell her to watch this and have her husband watch this cuz I'm giving the advice okay so if in step two, Tracy and, and Hubs, you have determined that we do think there are some things that could be true and they would have to be true for us to stay to then get where we want to go long term, then we're very clearly laying those out. This has to be true. Or in other words, this change has to be made. This has to be true. This has to be true. This has to be true. And we're very, very clear. And so what we're saying here is, in no uncertain terms, this must change or I'm out. Now, that crystal clarity is necessary to give you the confidence that you need, Tracy's husband, to talk to dad about this. Because you respect dad, you love dad, dad's the founder, it's his business, you're the only sibling left. You must have crystal clarity when you go into confrontation, folks. You get in so much trouble when you go to confront professionally or personally when you aren't crystal clear on what you feel and what you believe. So now we sit down with dad and we go, dad, here's the deal. I invested money in the business. I know for a fact that it's not gone where you initially told me it was. It's over here, over here, over here, over here. This is broken and this must now be true. Or I can't do this. This is broken, and this now must be true, or I can't stay here. And Dad, I love you, but I care more about our relationship and my future than I do about trying to please you 
and staying on in this role. This cannot continue. I care more about Thanksgiving dinners over the next decade than I do working for you next Thursday. Woo! I am bringing it right now because that's not comfortable. That's not easy to say. But here's what happens. Tracy, if your husband doesn't do what I'm telling him to do, and he holds this in, and he either stays long-term, or he leaves in a way that is not healthy and just kind of, we're not going to talk about it. There will be tremendous resentment. If you try to avoid disappointment with your family members and friends who have expectations of you that are not parallel to what you want to do, what you believe you should do, watch what happens. If I allow other people's opinions to keep me from being and doing what I'm, who I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to do. Watch what happens. Instead of you trade, I don't want to disappoint them, but you end up resenting them. And the disappointment is on their end. That's their problem, not your problem. But the resentment that you hold against them is all with you. It will poison your soul and poison your relationships. Choose to disappoint instead of resent. Tracy, I hope you and your husband watch this. And you guys stand for your future. It's going to be okay. This is the Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Thanks for listening to the Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.